In this video, I'll go over the difference between Docker and Docker Swarm and why I would use one or the other. Let me quickly show you the Docker containers that I'm running in my home lab. I'm going to create a new Tmux window. Now I'm going to execute this script that just lists all my Docker containers. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so you can see it. Notice that I have three different Docker servers, Docker 1, 2, 3. Each one of them is running different containers. Some of them are databases, some sites that I manage. This were some tests that I was running with DNS. App Cacher ng. This is to download my Ubuntu ISOs, of course. Another database, Samba, traffic, and a lot more. You'll be able to notice something interesting about this output. Notice the name here. Notice that this ends in this random string. So this string means that this container is part of Docker Swarm. You also notice that there are some other containers that don't have this string at the end, like this, this, or Jellyfin as an example. Notice that it doesn't have anything dot something at the end, or this netboot XYZ doesn't have any string at the end. So having the string at the end means that it's a container running in Docker Swarm, and without the string at the end, it means that it's just a regular container running in Docker. It's not part of a Swarm. So to understand this a little bit better, what is Docker in the first place? If we go to the website, we're going to notice that it's an open platform for developing, shipping, and running applications. So basically, Basically, Docker is just an application that you install on a Linux server. You can install it on Mac OS. I think you can install it on Windows. There are some Docker desktop applications. I don't do that. I install Docker on servers, and that's where I run other applications. The nice thing about Docker is that when you install an application, it's going to be isolated into what's called a container, and all of the dependencies are going to be included inside that container. For example, I could have WordPress installed as a container here, and it would show up as a single container. It would include all of the dependencies that WordPress needs to run, as opposed to installing WordPress in the host itself, which requires a lot of manual steps, a lot of dependencies that need to be installed, a lot of configuration also that needs to take place. So just think of Docker as a way to manage and install applications. Now, why would I run some applications in Docker like these? in a single container, and some other applications in Docker Swarm. Let's take a look at what Docker Swarm is. I'm just going to Google it real quick. Docker Swarm, I'm going to open the first link. Notice that Swarm mode is an advanced feature for managing a cluster of Docker daemons. So Swarm is basically what you see here. I have multiple servers, Docker 1, Docker 2, and Docker 3, and they share containers. Let me show you a practical example so you can get this better. Notice that Docker 3 is running all of these containers right now. One of the containers that it's running is XOA, and it's also running Jellyfin. As I said at the beginning, Jellyfin doesn't have this random string at the end. That means it's not part of the swarm. So if I bring this host down, if I shut down Docker 3, that means that all of the containers that are part of the swarm are going to be rescheduled in the other two servers. So I should see all of these being scheduled here, except for Jellyfin and Netboot XYZ. Let me open XOA so that I can show you, and I'm going to shut this host down. Okay, so I have XOA here. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to log in real quick, signed in. And this is what I use to manage my VMs. Notice that here is Docker 3. I'm going to stop it. And when I do, this is going to stop working momentarily XOA until it's rescheduled in another server. So I'm going to hit stop right now. I'm going to hit OK here. Now let me go back. We're going to see Docker 3 going down. We should see the other containers come back up in a few seconds. We will be able to see it here in the status column. Notice that all of them came up at the same time. They are starting. Notice the health here. These are healthy. Started 13 seconds ago. Started 12 seconds ago. Remember that XOA was running on Docker 3. Now it was scheduled on Docker 1. It's still starting. Just going to give it a few more seconds. Okay, so notice that XOA shows now healthy. I'm going to go back to the browser. I'm going to refresh the screen. I'm still able to access this. Notice that Docker 3 is down. I can see it right here. But now if we go back to the containers, you will be able to see that Jellyfin was never scheduled somewhere else because Jellyfin was never deployed as a Swarm application, but instead just as a single Docker container. Now let me bring this up again. I'm going to click here, start. Let me go into the console to see the status. Notice that it's coming back up. This is a two minute delay that I added on the Docker servers just because I want them to start after my storage and my DNS is up. So I did this on purpose. Okay, so notice that the two minute delay is done. The host is back up. Let's go back to the terminal. Notice that Jellyfin is up again and these other containers that are running not as part of the swarm, just as regular containers. Also notice that the containers were not rebalanced. That's not something that is done automatically. You need to rebalance your containers to schedule some of these here. So basically, you just need to update or restart a few containers in the swarm, and then Docker is going to detect that, and it's going to reschedule them in Docker 3. Let me run the script right now so you can see. I moved to the window 1 in Tmux here. I have the script here, Docker rebalance. I'm going to execute it. It detects that the three hosts are up. It's going to use Docker 3. 
to rebalance the container. It's going to rebalance seven of them. It counted how many services I have, 19. So it's just going to do seven. I'm going to hit yes to continue here. And it's going to start the rebalance process. You will be able to see that it's doing one container at a time. App Cacher NG, that's the one that it started with. Let me go to the other Tmux window so we can see that. Okay, so notice that it's starting there. It's waiting for the container to be healthy before it moves on to the next container. Okay, so now it's moving on to the next one. It completed the next one, following one. Let's go back to the other window. We see bind. We should see the other one here soon. And here it is. It's going to take a few more seconds. So I'm going to skip this part and see when it's done. Okay, so it's done. Let's go back to the other window. Notice that Docker decided to bring this one up, MySQL, in Docker 1 instead of Docker 3. I'm not sure what's taken into consideration. I'm not sure if it measures the load in each server or what takes place in the background, but it rebalances the container. You need to rebalance them after you bring a host up. You don't but I like to do it just so that my load on each server is even, but it's definitely not necessary. Using that script is the way that I personally do it. I'm not exactly sure how other people do it, probably using a script as well, but it's something that you can keep in mind. How do you add Docker servers to the cluster? Let me log in to one of my servers. I'm going to press hyper EJ, take me to Docker 3. I'm going to type here Docker node LS, hit enter, and notice that as part of this swarm, I have three Docker hosts. They're ready, active. This was the one chosen as leader, Docker 2. All of them are running the same version. I have three of them running, which means that one of them can go down and the swarm is going to keep working. Just keep an odd number of devices running. You can read more about that here in the swarm admin guide. You have to maintain the quorum of managers. Notice this part, an odd number of managers is recommended. Whether you have three or four managers, you can still only lose one manager and maintain the quorum. If you have five or six, you can still lose two. So if you're going to run a Docker Swarm cluster, you should run three, four, five nodes. If you're just going to run one, that doesn't make any sense because that's just a single Docker server. You don't need Swarm at all in that case. You can read more about this in this page. If you find it useful, I'm going to leave it in the video description. So how is Swarm useful then? Let's say that you have three servers in your infrastructure and you need to bring one of them down. You can do that without any issues, knowing that your services are going to be rescheduled in other servers and everything is going to be operational. But on the other hand, if you just deploy a single Docker container and you need to bring it down for maintenance, all of your services will be gone. So that's the main benefit, high availability of the services. Should you use Docker Swarm in production? I'm using it in my home lab right now because that's what I started with. I'm slowly migrating all of my services to Kubernetes. You can see that on this other window, I have some services that are migrated. I haven't had the time to migrate everything to Kubernetes, but if you're just getting started, you want to play with containers, I would recommend you to start with a single server first. Then you're going to realize that it's a pain to have a single server because when you want to shut it down, you lose all your services. So at that point would be a good idea to consider a three node swarm cluster or maybe a Kubernetes cluster, but Kubernetes is way more complex and advanced than Docker Swarm. There must be companies that use Docker Swarm in production, small companies, I guess, but big companies definitely use Kubernetes. I would like to know what do you use in your home lab? Do you use Docker Swarm? Do you use Kubernetes? Do you use Docker running on a single host? Do you use Docker desktop, maybe running on a Mac or something? Let me know down in the comments. And also let me know if you want to see more content related to Docker, Docker Swarm, Kubernetes, and all that stuff. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like the channel, subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.